Uh, first question regarding the homog uh, homogenisation uh, in regards to large and small Stevenson screens. We've discussed this before. You've uh, done parallel runs on five of the 112 Acorn stations. Um, and then you've basically, and in your parallel run analysis, you've said there's a difference of 0 0.9. And you've basically got there by averaging the five parallel runs. Because when you've given me the data on each individual station, Amberley, for example, was uh, a difference of 0.363. Broome was down 0.194. Walls Creek was up slightly 0.026 and Mackay was down 0.169. So that contradicts the information that you gave me in prior estimates when I asked you about the Spanish study uh, and there was a difference of 0.54 degrees and you said I can't use that study for here in Australia because every site's different. So if every site's different, why have you combined four sites into five sites into one to come up with a, a 0 0.9 difference to claim that there's no uh, material difference in between the large and small Stevenson screen when you actually, whereas if you actually look at the individual stations, there's a much larger variance. Uh, Chair, uh, through you, I might uh, ask my colleague Dr. Stone to address uh, Senator's questions. If that's yeah, all right. Th thanks for the, the question, Senator. Um, we don't actually use data from parallel runs uh, to inform uh, homogenisation. Uh, because of the phenomenon that you've just outlined, whereby different stations, uh, when you run, do parallel runs, you get different sized differences. Yeah. Yeah. So instead what we do is use homogenisation to understand the impact of changes in observation practice. But doesn't the 10 principles for climate monitoring say that you should do parallel runs between the old and new stations? as per the independent peer review? It, it does, and but the, the question I'd ask is, what does that tell you? And it tells you less about changes in the system than doing homogenisation, which is, in essence, a series of parallel runs between a single location and a, and a larger number of its nearest neighbours. But shouldn't you do it between the large and small Stevenson screen? If you're going to do a change in equipment, you need to do it between the old equipment and the new equipment, not between sites that are up to 1,000 kilometres away, because that involves, whether you like it or not, I still haven't seen your workings on Marble Bar, for example, but that still involves estimates and guesswork rather than getting precise measurements between the old and the new. Yeah, the, the, the challenge is, is that when you do parallel runs, uh, you don't end up with a single number that um, you can use. So, so uh, you know, if the Spanish study showed a 0.54 difference, yep. that difference isn't stable. So on a hot day, the difference between a small screen and a large screen is likely much smaller yep. than the difference on a cool day. Yep. But the Spanish study had all that detail. That's, I'm just simplifying it to give you a yeah, 0.54. No, so I'll, it went month by I'll month, day by day. So you can get the number, yep. but there's not actually a lot that you can do with it when you get the difference. You actually get a lot more by using that homogenisation process. Which is, the homo well, there's two types of homogenisation. There's parallel runs and there's reference stations, right? I would argue that using a parallel run on the place between large, old and new is a lot more accurate than relying on weather stations up to 1,000 kilometres away. Yeah, it, it would be for things like rainfall that vary highly spatially, but um, temperature is, in many instances, uh, conservative across space or, or consistently, um, or sorry, predictably different across spaces. So you do actually get um, more information about the impact of a change of observation practice like screen size by actually using the much larger... Well, um, well I disagree because Marble Bar is 200 kilometres inland, Port Headland, which is one of the reference stations on the coast. So coastal conditions are completely different to inland conditions. So Brisbane, you know, 280 kilometres from my hometown of Chinchilla, completely two different weather patterns. One's dry, one's humid. Absolutely, yep. but so you wouldn't choose nearest neighbours that were wildly different. You, you, the, the process actually selects for those where there's but a predict, what, sorry to where there's a predictable up. difference. But that's what you have done with Marble Bar is that you've picked Port Headland as one of your reference stations. Then, if that's the case, then it's because the statistical analysis has shown that there's a predictable difference okay, between the so two. I'm going so to ask this for the third time, not tonight. This is the third time I've asked these questions on estimates, is that I've asked for the workings of this statistical analysis, not a description, the actual workings that come back to those differences in December 1923, 
I don't want 1997 because that was a change of equipment. I want to see the statistical analysis for 1923 where you've changed the weather records at Marble Bar. Some days were up, some white days were down. So there was no shift one way or the other. It was you know, up and down, up and down, up I and down. How you can predict that? that. It, it'll be very difficult to show you the workings though because um, the, the process of doing homogenisation, the calculations at a single site, so Marble yep. Bar for example, the number of calculations used in the climate record um, for homogenisation of maximum temperature is between 350 and 500 million separate calculations. Minimum temperature, it's between 250 and 300 million calculations right. in order to derive the transfer function yep. that is actually generated okay. at a monthly basis. Okay. Well, and well, once the transfer function yeah. has been generated, yep. That is then has several thousand calculations done on it to actually um, do the adjustments at, at individual sites. Okay, I've just got one more. For, yeah, so just one more. One, um, so, when you pick these outliers, you've got a, a fixed and absolute difference. So, in, so you've gone, for example, you'll look at an outlier if it's at least 0.3 difference in the annual mean temperature, at least 0.3 difference in the means of at least two of the four seasons, and at least half a degree difference in the mean of at least one season. Why are you using fixed numbers and not relative standard deviations from maximum and minimum rather than a fixed deviation from the mean, which would work against hotter stations that have a higher number to begin with, so you'd get more variance there. But if you're going to be statistical, you should be using number of standard deviations from the mean rather than a fixed number. Question rather than Yeah, so the question is why use a fixed number rather than a relative standard deviation yeah, sorry, to, be clear, to determine an outlier. A modular, no, that's not to, no, sorry, it's not, those figures aren't used in order to determine an outlier. That a term, they're well, they used determine whether or not you've got a, an in, in, what's the word you use? Uh, uh, incongruity? Oh, discontinuity? Yeah, discontinuity, yeah. that's the one. So yeah. it, make, it makes sense to have an absolute level of, of uh, discontinuity that, that you're looking for when you're comparing it with an absolute temperature scale. So uh, really, again, just want to be clear, that 0.3 that you referred yep. to, that's not used in homogenisation. That's used it's to help... Well, it, 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 yeah. And yep. Dr Stone, I'm going to pull you up here because we have 33 minutes remaining. We have yep. two more, three more questioners on Bureau of Med and we still have the Antarctic Division. Well, to well go Chair, to I have, this is the third time I've come in here and asked for an answer on Marble Bar and I still haven't got it. Then put it on notice. Well, well I'll put it on notice and I'll never get an answer. I'll wait two months. months and I'll get it a week before the next set of estimates. Senator Rennick, I understand yep. that. Authorised G. Rennick, LMP Chermside.